It is due to scientific progress today that uh, the modern mind has become conceited and uh, tends to disbelieve in these monuments of scriptural wisdom. We are going to discuss this subject in a little more detail because it's due to science that many people de uh, deny the existence of God and God is the creator. But if we look at the limitations of science, you know, today science has invented so many big machines, but can science make even a hair? Just think. There are so many advertisements in the world today for bald people. People have tried and tried and tried. People have made money, but nobody has made hair. In fact, they have lost more hair because they have lost their money. Forget making hair. Has science found a permanent solution for gray hair? People have to keep buying all those products and then it's the same old story. What I'm trying to bring to you is the limitation of scientific progress. And imagine creating this vast variety that you see around you. It's just impossible. In fact, uh, the scientists today are more open-minded. They have begun to realize that they do not know anything for certain anymore. And uh, I think it was a person named Albert Gorgi. You know what he said? He said the sum total of our discoveries are always going to be lesser than the mysteries. There will always be more mysteries which we haven't yet discovered. Even the theory of electrons, what is the energy behind it? Even the human brain is still a mystery for scientists. They have not been able to find out. The scientists who went deep into understanding the why and what of this universe, some way down the line they have admitted in different terminology the existence of God. Herbert Spencer, at the end of his book, The Principles, when he was 80 years old, he said that his unknowable, that's the name he gave, his unknowable in no way conflicted with religion, but in fact supported it. James Jeans, who was a mathematician and philosopher of Cambridge, said the creator of this world is a supreme mind. See the words they are using. Unknowable, supreme mind. But Albert Einstein, everybody has heard about him, the originator of the theory of relativity. He said, I believe in God who reveals himself in the orderly harmony of this world. There is a book called The Great Design, edited by F.H. Mason. In that, 14 scientists have given the sum total of their life's research. They said that this world is not a blind mechanism. There is a mind, a mind behind the veil of matter. You may give it any name. So scientists had given it different names because they couldn't understand. But nevertheless, in their own way, those who went really deep, they admitted the existence of God in their own way. Both perception and inference, they are very limited in proving the existence of God. Therefore, we have to take the support of the scriptures. The scriptures are the only means by which we can prove God. Pratyakshenanu mityava 
ಎಸ್ತು ಪಾಯೋ ನ ಬುದ್ಧ್ಯತೆ ತರ್ಕಶಾಸ್ತ್ರ ದಟ್ ಸುಪ್ರೀಂ ಬೀಂಗ್ ಗಾಡ್ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ನಾಟ್ ಬಿ ಪ್ರೂವ್ಡ್ ಬೈ ಇನ್ಫ್ಲುಯೆನ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಪರ್ಸೆಪ್ಷನ್ ಹಿ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಬಿ ಪ್ರೂವ್ಡ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಥ್ರೂ ದ ಸ್ಕ್ರಿಪ್ಚರ್ಸ್ ಇವನ್ ದ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಸೂತ್ರ ಸೆಸ್ ಶಾಸ್ತ್ರ ಯೋನಿತ್ವಾತ್ ಒನ್ ಒನ್ ಥ್ರೀ ಗಾಡ್ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಬಿ ಪ್ರೂವ್ ಥ್ರೂ ಸ್ಕ್ರಿಪ್ಚರ್ಸ್ ಎವ್ರಿ ರಿಲಿಜನ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಸ್ಕ್ರಿಪ್ಚರ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಟು ಡಿನಾಯ್ ಆರ್ ಇಗ್ನೋರ್ ದಿ ಸ್ಕ್ರಿಪ್ಚರ್ಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಟು ಡಿನಾಯ್ ದ ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ ವೈಟಲ್ ನಾಲೆಜ್ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಅವೇಲೇಬಲ್ ಟು ಮ್ಯಾನ್ perhaps some of you know that today there's a lot of research going on with the vedas even in the west that's why it is said na vedavin manute the shatchayani upanishad says that you can only know god through the vedas for common men we can say that the vedas are the most ancient book of scriptures nobody has been able to date them till today they are the oldest books in the library of mankind but the actual truth is the vedas are eternal knowledge nishvasita masya veda they are the breath of the eternal so these vedas are the most authentic scriptures of knowledge they are the foundation of sanatan dharma and in these book of scriptures we have many verses proving that god exists atma krite the brahma sutra number 1426 parinamat brahma sutra 1427 sokamayat Taitri Upanishad number 26 and the same thing you find in the Gita Brahmayan Sarva Bhutani Yantra Rudhani Mayaya Ishvara Sarva Bhutanam Hridde Shejuna Tishthati 18 chapter 61st verse Lord Krishna says I reside with, within each and every living being and I am the one who moves them like a machine according to their karmas. So God can only be proved completely by scriptural testimony and this is not something that people have just written. These are actually the experiences of great saints. you know in as far as material science is concerned we are willing to accept what investigators in those fields give us as truths we accept them very readily in the same way we should with respect accept what those spiritual scientists have with faith and uh, devotion and deep meditation experienced and testified to almost in every country we have saints who have experienced that supreme entity you read in the bible that moses saw god in the burning bush the prophet elijah heard the still small voice the prophet muhammad his life is full of mystic experiences and in india there are so many so many saints who have testified to the experience of god tukaram kabir guru nanak dev meera sudas so many of them the evidence is too massive to ignore and eventually we have to remember one thing very important till we get to that firm conviction and believe what the scriptures say as far as god is concerned remember one thing we walk by faith not by sight tennyson said by faith and faith alone embrace believing where we cannot prove 
One philosopher said, if God did not exist, we would have to invent him in order to prevent man from mutual destruction. Another argument, even people who believe in God, sometimes their belief wavers. And not only that, you face people who try to argue. Now, if somebody is willing to listen, then all these points that I've given you can help you. There's a French philosopher named Blaise Pascal. His argument about the existence of God is very famous. It's called the bet and wager argument. You know what he said? If you believe in God and he exists, then you gain everything. And if you believe in God and he does not exist, you don't lose anything. But if you do not believe in God and he exists, then you are definitely going to be the loser. So even if you don't have complete belief in God, there is no harm in believing. There is no harm in believing. You don't lose anything. So whatever arguments I've given to you, and of course I said the most important proof are the scriptures, we can safely say that there is God. Nobody has been able to wipe out the name of God from this earth till today. Emperors have come and gone, dynasties have vanished, but the name of God is still here. Therefore, God exists and he is the creator of this vast universe. But there is a big if, a big if, listen very carefully, there is a big if in accepting God as the creator. What has God created? The scriptures say that there are three eternal entities. Sarva jive, sarva sansthe brihante, asmin hanso, brahmyate brahma chakre, prithagatmanam preritarancha matva, Shvetashvata Rupanishad 1.6 Gya Gya Udva Vaja Vishanisha Vaja Heka Bhogtri Bhogyartha Yukta Ananta Shatma Vishwarupo Hyakarta Trayam Yada Vindate Brahma Meta Number 1. 9 Etaj Geyam Nityam Evatma Sansam Nata Param Vedit Abhyam Hikinchit Bhogta Bhogyam Preritarancha Matpa Sarvam Proktam Trividham Brahma Metat. Not only the Vedas, but also the Gita says, Dvavimau Purusholoke Sharashchakshara Evacha. 15th chapter, 16th verse. There are three eternal entities God, we, the individual souls, and Maya. These three entities are beginningless. Mind you, we have to just accept this term beginningless because our mind is always used to, you know, once upon a time. And that's where we will not be able to understand a lot of important uh, truths about our own karma and this creation. So for the time being, we have to accept that three entities, what the Vedas state is that we are beginningless, God is beginningless, and even Maya is beginningless. That means God has not created us, the individual souls. God has not created Maya. We, the individual souls, have not created God. We have not created Maya. And Maya has not created God. Maya has not created the individual souls. And then God has not created God. Individual souls have not created individual souls. Maya has not created Maya. And then again, God cannot destroy the individual souls. God cannot destroy Maya. The individual souls cannot destroy God. 
they cannot destroy maya maya cannot destroy god nor can it destroy the individual souls and god cannot destroy god individual souls cannot destroy individual souls and maya cannot destroy maya so three are unborn beginningless and these three combined together is what this world is now if these three combined together is what this world is then what did god create god himself is eternal we are eternal and maya is eternal and there is no other fourth entity only three eternal entities and these are all unborn so the question is why is god called the creator very important question everywhere we listen to that he is the creator but what has he created we are all eternal the second question is we hear that god is all pervading yes he pervades every particle of this universe but we do not experience the divine presence of god we experience so many things we touch we see we hear we smell but we do not experience the sweetness the bliss of god anywhere in this world you mix a spoon of sugar in water and drink it you experience the sweetness then you mix some lime into that water you will experience even the sour part of it then when god pervades every particle of this universe why do we not experience his presence second question and the third question is darwin's question Darwin questioned the creation from God by saying that God is a perfect entity then how could he create an imperfect world God is merciful he is loving and what about his creation there is so much suffering there is misery there is unhappiness if God has created something when he himself is perfect then what he creates should also be perfect how can what he creates be totally opposite of what he is we all experience suffering we experience sorrow and we hear that god is the creator of this world so this is a very important question mind you it's not only darwin's question it is our question as well we also have doubts like this in our mind all the time whenever we see suffering we wonder how can god be so cruel he's perfect god and how can he allow so much suffering and misery in this world when we are all parts of him so these three important questions we will discuss next time बोलिए वृंदावन बिहारी लाल की श्रीमद सतगुरु सरकार की जय जय राधा रानी राधा रानी राधा रानी वन महारानी राधा रानी जय जय विहरती वृंदावन राधा रानी
जय जय ब्रज बनी तनि धन राधा रानी जय जय ब्रज वासिन धन राधा रानी जय जय राधा रानी पालू मोहिनी राधा रानी 